Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to turn the purple plague into gold. I have in my hand here something called purple gold. Now this is actually gold, it's about 80% gold. That means it's higher gold percentage than 18 karat gold. Now another name for this purple gold is called the purple plague. And the reason is because gold is used a lot in electronics and many times you have to bond gold wires to aluminum. So what happens when you try to bond gold to aluminum is it forms this inner metallic compound called purple gold or purple plague. So it has one atom of gold and two atoms of aluminum around it. And when it forms this mixture, something weird happens. It doesn't really act like a metal anymore, but it acts more like a ceramic with a specific stoichiometric ratio. So the purple gold is actually really brittle. But what's cool about it is it actually has super low conductivity, just like pure gold. So I have a circuit here connected to an LED with an open right here. So the LEDs right here continues on to complete the circuit. If I grab something that's conductive, put it on this, you can see it turns on the circuit. So let's grab a piece of our purple gold and see if it's conductive or not. Okay, purple gold completes it. You can see the resistance here is zero. It's not really zero, but it's low enough that this meter can't pick up the resistance. So normally that wouldn't be bad for electronics because it would still have the conductivity. So after a while, because there's no flexibility, the purple gold will eventually just break. This purple gold is pretty amazing because it has a very bright purple color to it. It's not like the rose gold or white gold that have just a slight hue to it. But even though purple gold doesn't really act like a metal and it's not malleable, it's still used in the jewelry industry, but it's used more like a stone because it's hard and it can break just like a stone. Now this purple gold is pretty cool, but let's see if we can figure out a way to turn it back into regular gold. Now one thing I know is that if you put aluminum in sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, it reacts with the hydroxide ion and forms sodium aluminate. Because aluminum reacts readily with sodium or potassium hydroxide, I want to see what happens when I put the purple gold in potassium hydroxide. Let's see if the aluminum will just get picked out of it and just leave the gold there. Okay, let's drop it in and see what happens. Well, it immediately starts bubbling. Those bubbles coming off of it is hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas is also a byproduct of this reaction. Okay, this is cool. I can immediately see a color change happening now. So it's not purple anymore. It's turning a gold color. So I think it's actually working. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Okay, here's our final product, gold. Now I'm guessing the gold is only on the surface here and not in the under layers, but the gold that's left here should be kind of spongy. Basically it's taken all the aluminum atoms around it and just left the gold. Okay, so we're gonna measure how much aluminum we're actually removing from this. Okay, so we have 0.198 grams. So I'll stick it in here and let it sit for about an hour. So after the reaction, 0.180, so it did lose some weight. So that weight that it lost is because the aluminum that was on the surface reacted with the solution. So I've turned the three pieces of the purple gold into regular gold here on the surface. But I'm pretty sure that this pure gold is only on the surface now. I don't think it was able to get into the lower layers. So let's break one of them and see what it looks like. Okay, let's see what the layers underneath look like for this. So it's still pretty brittle and inside of it you can see that it's actually purple. Now before we end, I'd like to thank Mel Science for sponsoring this video. If you like this channel, then you'll love our sponsor Mel Science. They offer a range of topics like physics, chemistry, and STEM. Each month you'll receive a set with up to three awesome experiments. Their subscriptions are for ages 5 to 13 plus and they include free VR and AR lessons on the Mel Science app. So whether you homeschool your kids or you want to just give your kids a boost in their science grades, check out Mel Science. They're a leading ed tech company that makes science accessible and fun. I received a few Mel physics sets recently and I think it's a great way to spend time with your kids as well. For example, this is one of their physics boxes called Electrostatics. It has its own Van de Graaff machine. Whoa. <laughs> So if you want to get 60% off your first box, click the link in my description or use the code ACTIONLAB. And thanks again for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet or hit the bell to be notified when I release my latest video. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.